And my man won an award for this movie. What I, I know, right? It's crazy. Uh, but you could tell his acting was very rough. And I always love seeing like a lot of the 80s slash early 90s action stars like him, Swayze, Arnold, and Stallone. <laughs> Bruh, welcome to <laughs> What the fuck? You know, that reminds me of... You ever played Cruising USA back in the day? Yeah. Oh, we're gonna crash! Ah! <laughs> welcome to another episode of The Film Bros. I'm one of your hosts. That is CEO Hayes, and I'm joined by my brother, the prodigal one, JB, with the fresh lining. God damn it, boy, you look good. What's up, JB? Damn, bro, I haven't gotten a haircut in like two weeks, but I'll take it. Yes, <laughs> it's your boy, Otacon JB, with another episode of the Film Frequency. Can't wait to get into it, bro. We're going back to the 80s. We're going back to the 80s. So I know we already said that uh, in, in January we'll be doing a lot of retro reviews. So this isn't technically part of that, but fuck it. We had to do something. Uh, we were talking about like what we wanted to do as a mini review. And yeah, there are some newer movies that we haven't got to review here yet. Um, and we could have easily did it. But the moment you brought up Bloodsport, I was just like, you know what? Fuck it, we gotta do this shit. Um, so that's what we're here to review this week. That we were reviewing Bloodsport with Jean Claude Van Damme, Forrest Whitaker before the eye got too bad. There's all types of shit in this movie. Uh, what's your favorite memory from this movie? Man, honestly, like there's so many memories, but like I honestly must have seen this movie about at least a hundred times. Like growing up in New York, and I'm sure it was only not only the New York market, I'm sure it was all over, but I felt like when I was growing up, this shit showed every other week on TBS and TBS would always have like every couple of months, like they would call it like man week or something like that. And this would always headline man week on TBS where they would show like all these eighties and nineties action movies. And I've seen this shit so many times. I mean, I know it word for word easily for me, John Claude's um, best role, my favorite John Claude Van Damme movie. Well, it's funny you say that because this is technically his first major role. Um, yes. This one. Uh, he was cast in, in Predator. They used him as a stunt double. Uh, he was in Breaking. Uh, very minor role there. He was actually a gay karate dude in Monaco forever. And then uh, No no Retreat, No Surrender, in which he played the bad guy in that movie, but still a very minor role. This was his, first, his basically his debut as a main uh, character in the movie. What did you, Go ahead. And my man won an award for this movie. What I know, right? It's crazy. Uh, but you could tell his acting was very rough. And I always love seeing like a lot of the 80s slash early 90s action stars like him, Swayze, Arnold, and Stallone. Stallone was the best actor out the bunch, I think, like pure actor out of that bunch. But to see all of them, how they have prog progressed over their career, like Arnold at this point is a great actor. Like, I don't know if you saw, I forgot the name of the zombie movie where uh, his daughter was turned into, was it Maggie? Something like that. Like, that was probably Arnold's best acting role. Oh, you told me about that. Yeah, yeah. And then now uh, with John claude Van Damme, like, he progressed so far as an actor. He's still not, like, a great actor by any means. But this one was so fucking cheesy. Like, looking at him deliver his lines, you can see him thinking about the line before he delivered it. But it didn't stop this from being a really good movie. Yeah, so I mentioned he won an award for this one. Do you know what award he won? Was it a Razzie? It was a freaking Razzie. Yeah. I have it right here. He won the 19... The 1989 Razzie Award, or I'm sorry, he didn't win it, but he was nominated for Worst New Star. Mm. The, the, the Razzie Award he did win, uh, believe it or not, was in 1998, where he won Worst Screen Couple. Do you know who, the, who his counterpart uh -uh. was? Uh-uh. You don't know? No. I'll give you a hint. You love their team. Love their team. Oh, this that doesn't count. Dennis Rodman was only here for a very few short amount of time. No, but that's but, what the Razzie was for. Yeah, yeah. Him I and forget, Dennis yeah. Rodman won it. It was oh my god. I, I I still like that movie, but we'll talk about that at some point or another. <laughs> um, funny thing with this movie. Uh, so the screenwriter is the, Frank Ducks is based off a, a real life person. Um, and the screenwriter spent some time with him, and this guy was telling him stories, and then now like the writer, uh, after the fact was like, I found out like most of the stories you told me were complete bullshit. So it's funny that they like there's a dedication to this guy at the end of the movie and like who knows what he told was true versus not. But it's just funny that this guy was so moved by the writer was so moved by Frank Duck's story and like the things that he told him that he, he made this movie and then later to find out that it's complete bullshit. 
Yeah, I mean, and I not now, but I remember back in the day because I was in like absolutely intrigued with this movie, and I went and did research, and when I started googling up uh, Frank Dukes, literally every single thing was like debunked, uh, you know, bullshit. <laughs> that, like every article, and it kind of it kind of broke my heart in a way, but in a way, I didn't really didn't give a fuck as well because. You know, I, for me, Frank Dukes is freaking John Claude Van Damme. Claude Van Damme. Yeah, yeah that, that that's 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 you know that's him to me. And regardless of what what whether it was real or not, I I absolutely enjoy the movie. I just wanted to get some housekeeping out of the way because we okay. discussed some of this shit. You could, I don't know. You might be maybe you'll be surprised. Maybe you won't be surprised. Wrong Tomatoes, absolutely shocked. Thirty nine percent on the tomato meter. Seventy four percent on audience score. Not too bad, but. Those are some low ass scores, man. And it was like a you know under seven on uh, IMDb. I think it was like a six point eight, if I'm not mistaken. What do you think about that? Doesn't surprise me. Like a lot of these eighties action movies. Hey, Rotten Tomatoes was not around back then, and that's why I personally don't like looking at Rotten Tomatoes for movies uh, that that came out long before Rotten Tomatoes was a thing. Only because looking back at most eighties movies, it's cheesy as shit. Yes. So if we if we if you go back like and that's gonna happen in two thousand and fucking forty two when they go back and look at the Avengers they're gonna be like what the fuck is this shit um so it's kind of skewed then I would more so like I I wish there was something back then that we could better gauge because when this movie came out in eighty eight it wouldn't have been shit on like that because that's that's just the type of movies that were made in that day yeah I agree with you um but I will say this about this movie and again I could be totally biased but. You know, my, my co-host on, I do another show called PWR Wrestling Show, Professor, he's always bringing up, like, looking at, because we, you know, we review old school wrestling shows. And mm. he's always talking about what we live through versus looking at it in your 2019 eyes. Yeah. Normally, when I watch an 80s or a 90s movie, no matter how much I love it, looking at my 2019 eyes, it's cheesy as hell. It's stupid. Yes, this movie was cheesy, but even with my 2019 eyes, I enjoyed every hour and 35 minutes, whatever it was of it. Um, Again, I could be completely biased, but I, I totally enjoyed it. Yeah, I mean, I think it's different when, A, me and you were like fucking two and five when this movie came out. So, But it was still very much like we grew up on movies like this. Someone like my son, who's 13, who didn't grow up on this, him going back and watching this, would probably be like, what the fuck is this shit? He probably so would. It, it's all about like even though you have to go back with your 2019 eyes and view that view it now there's it's still we still have a different perspective on it than somebody who's like just new into movies or whatever or younger um but you know the thing with this is that that made me miss this and seriously as as i was watching this all i thought about is i missed fighting montages yes like I, bro bro like, like it, it like the music like just like watching it visually like yeah the fight scenes are all like you can clearly see that the person's foot did not come anywhere close to somebody's body but it's just something about the way that montages were done back back in the day like uh like i already mentioned the music that they use behind it but just the actors portrayal like as much as they weren't actually fighting each other and it, they didn't even really try to make it look like they were making contact but the actors were really into this shit and i don't know how many of these actors like in the montages specifically were actually uh martial artists at all but it just i don't know it, it's hard to it's hard to put into words but an 80s montage can't be beat in my opinion. oh bro it's absolutely classic and i don't care if you're yeah. talking about martial arts you're talking about rocky with boxing yeah. karate kid whatever it is i mean i used to love 80s montages man it was a staple of the 80s and you know a little bit in the 90s but you know they kind of shied away from that kind of now, but yeah, I absolutely love it. I know you were speaking about the um, the screenwriter, uh, Sheldon. What is it, Sheldon Lettage? I think his name was. Yeah, Lettage. Yeah, right. So I was actually looking at his uh, filmography on IMDb. This man did some pretty good shit. I don't know if you got to look at it. He did Double Impact, just to name a few: Double Impact, Lionheart, Rambo Three, and uh, and obviously you know this movie, and you know quite a lot of them. But just right there, those are some big '80s and '90s action movies. Yeah. Yeah, that that's that. I mean, the funny thing is, is like I think people get like typecast now, and you'll see like screenwriters only only write certain types of movies. But uh, the eighties action writers that it they really, when you think about it, they got cycled in and out. There weren't too many people who like stayed on one franchise. For example, like you said, he wrote Rambo three. He probably didn't write any other Rambo other than that. Like, and oh. that's why like so, there's some when you really go back and look like eighties movies, and especially pe ones that had a lot of sequels. The, the tone in sequels changes drastically from movie to movie, and that's part of the reason. Absolutely. And then the last thing I just wanted to do to set the table here, 
um, was box office. We always talk about the numbers. Um, this movie had a sh- – well, and you can tell, but – the budget was one point one million, which is literally like nothing nowadays. Uh, I mean, yeah. you can't even make payroll with one point one million nowadays. Mm. And um, opening week, they did five hundred and fifteen thousand, almost uh, five hundred sixteen thousand, uh, and they grossed uh, worldwide almost twelve million, which is not a lot. But I think it's more. This thing is more of a cult classic. It's not that it had a big box office, but I think it, at the time it maybe wasn't perceived as something huge. But over time, it's become a cult classic. What do you think? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, cult classics, I think, are one of those things that I don't want to say they go away. But now because of the, the, the like, for example, Bird Box. Let's just let me just say Bird Box, for example, on Netflix. It, it, it gets viewed as this huge movie because of social media and everything now. Yes. But really, it's a cult classic. It's it's something that went straight to to technically it would have been straight to DVD back in the day, and that would have been something that's looked at as a as a cult classic. We really don't get that anymore because we're all connected now through social media, and it makes some of these movies seem like the, this huge thing. Um, and that's something that I miss, like the whole idea of trading tapes and everything. Like, oh, yeah. oh you haven't seen Bloodsport? Like, it it I don't know. I just missed that a little bit. You know, it's funny you say that, and I, I, I know you're, um, you have me on Facebook, but my brother, for those who don't know, his name is Q. He was going through some of our old tapes. I don't know if you saw that post he made, and it's just crazy. He was texting me all the old shit. I mean, I had Back to the Futures on there. Um, I had some Monday Night Raws. I had um, Rockies. It was so crazy. And I used to trade, like you said, we used to trade tapes with friends. Like, hey, did you see this one? No. Okay, well, here, I'll lend you this. You lend me that, and it's just nuts, man. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Ready to get into this movie? Yeah, let's get into it. I know we talked we've talked around it a lot. So the basic premise of this movie, Frank Ducks is a Dukes. Uh, Dukes, Dukes Ducks. Like what you like Dukes, man. <laughs> Frank Dukes, uh he's he's in the US Army. He basically goes AWOL to fight in this uh martial arts competition and uh two officers are sent to kind of bring him back which I don't, I don't fucking get Forrest Whitaker, uh, who plays Rollins and Helmer. I don't know the actor who plays Helmer. I just know Forrest Whitaker because I'm just so surprised to see a young fucking Forrest Whitaker. And um, yeah, I mean, I guess that's the basic premise of this movie. We can get <laughs> what. What the fuck, bro? Um, this is why you guys, if you guys aren't subscribed to us on, on YouTube, you gotta go check it out because you just miss you won't get what the fuck JB just did. You're an asshole, bro. You're <laughs> what did I do? Asshole. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but that yeah, all right. So, of um of uh, what's his name? Forrest Whitaker. Yeah, yeah. That that in Forrest Whitaker impression was fucking hilarious. But like what so I mean a very eighties uh premise here, a very eighties plot. Um, it's just fucking just all over the place. And I love how they have these big ass fucking tasers they keep threatening them with every time they come. Those things, Bro, man. That shit was that shit was fucking bigger than this microphone. Like, like I'm like, what? And then like they they put it in their pocket. There's no way anybody's carrying that around in their oh, pocket. Man, you're about to shock somebody or kill somebody. This shit is gigantic, <laughs> yeah. bro. I was like, what the hell? It's just like the 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 size of like solar lights that you put out in your front lawn. Yeah, that's just ridiculous, man. So would you think, first of all, so the way the movie starts, obviously, as you guys know by now, we don't go scene by scene. We kind of jump all over the place. Um, that's just the way we do it. So it was interesting to see him starting out. And, you know, I, like, you know, like CEO just said, he's in the he's in the the army and the acting by these two guys, the the the, the one that that went to go tell the, the other sergeant or colonel or whatever position he was like, hey. Frank is missing. The acting is so bad. Like if I felt like they were reading off the script of lines and it was just so really bad. Anyway, he goes into the shower and he sees him gone. My thing is he wasn't really a wall. He put in for furlough. So he was not a wall. He put in for furlough. So if he put in for furlough, furlough is approved. Who gives a fuck what he's doing on his furlough, whether he wants to go do that. <laughs> he wants to go have sex with some prostitutes. That's his own business. So, they shouldn't be caring what he's doing when he's on furlough. Hey, I mean, they wanted to make sure he wasn't giving America's dick away. <laughs> and also, by the way, let's not mention the fact, like many other movies, this man's playing a freaking American with a thick-ass Brussels accent or wherever the hell he's from accent. How crazy is that? I mean, well, granted, though, seriously, America, we do have a lot of foreigners in our military because people, foreigners just come here. 
to this country, and then they can't enlist in the military. So that's not too crazy. But he's playing a white American. Was did they ever say where he's supposed to be from? Well, Frank Dukes is white American, but eh, I guess so. I guess so. Yeah. But how about the how about the we talked about montages in the eighties and nineties. How about those flashback scenes like in the eighties and nineties? Also, mind you, this is. I mean, flashbacks are normally like 30 seconds, one minute. We had like a freaking 10-minute flashback, world's longest flashback ever. Why didn't they just start the movie off with that? Mm, I don't know if I would have liked that. I mean, would you rather have a 10-minute flashback, bro? Yeah, that's true. I enjoyed the flashback, though. I really enjoyed the flashback. It was cool, yeah. I yeah, mean... and the, 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 I mean, I'm going to be honest. Frank Dukes, as a kid, looked like a re- I mean, he sounded like a retard. <sighs> He was like, what kind of deal? And he was just like really, like really slurry. Like, um, the, the, the guy though had the accent on point. Yeah, that Kid. is true. That is true. <laughs> what is <laughs> Keep going. Keep going, bro. No, nah, man. I mean, I, I enjoyed it. And, and, um, I, I, again, I don't mean to be jumping around a bit, but as action packed as this movie was and as much shit at, as this movie had. Believe it or not, and you got to probably think I'm weird, and people might think I'm weird, but there was a moment in this movie where I got the feels. And every time I watch it, I got the feels. And you're thinking Van Damme, Bloodsport, late 80s, or, you know, how, how can there be anything? And the scene was um, after, you know, obviously, for those who don't know, his, his, his trainer was, was, you know, he called him Shidoshi, Shidoshi Tanaka. Tanaka's son... Shingo and Van, Van Damme's character became friends. They didn't really show that friendship too much, mm-hmm. but for whatever reason, reason Shingo died. They didn't ever said how he died. I don't. I mean, he could have gotten STDs from a Chinese prostitute. He could have gotten killed in a coup d'état. We don't. We don't know what Excessive, exactly happened. Obsessive masturbation. I could see it. He just going, <laughs> going, all, going all dim mock on his dick. I, I, I could absolutely see something like that happening. Um, so. Yeah, but that scene that where he said he died, that was a really strong scene. Um, even though even though Van Damme's acting wasn't that big, I think Tanaka's acting was big. But the dialogue was basically him saying, like, well, Shingo's dead. Like, what do we do now? And Tanaka is like, that's it. The training stops now. And he's like, why? Like, you can train me. And, you know, Tanaka's like, you know, you're not even you're not even from Japan. You're not a Tanaka. And, you know, Van Damme, his his delivery was like, yeah, but you you taught me to never stop and always have an open mind. And and then you got the you got I think that was the first tr- first or second training montage you got. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I, I mean that was a strong scene. Do you remember the scene? And you, what did you think about it? Yeah, I mean, I I guess I wasn't as moved by you. I, I mean, as you in that scene. Yo, Shingo's life doesn't matter. Shingo lives do not matter. Bullshit, bro. <laughs> no, I mean it was a cool scene. I mean it, pu- it pushed the the plot forward. All I was thinking about, like in watching this, was just I don't know, bro. Like I wish we could we like had this podcast back then because I'm sure the first time I watched this movie, I was all in it. I was just ready to see some fools get their ass kicked, bro. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, I mean, so there was, and trust me, there was a lot of ass kicking in this movie. Also, oh, another yeah. thing I forgot to point out from you know the whole flashback. Did you peep at what Van Damme's younger character was wearing? No, I missed it. He was wearing a New York Giants jersey, and he was wearing a Giants cap. The problem with that is it was a San Francisco Giants cap and a New York Giants jersey. I don't know who the fuck dressed this kid or what they were thinking. They, You know what? They thought, you know, Giants and Giants, just go ahead and put it on them. You know why people can't dress, bro? He could have been a Giants fan, like just Giants fan. I mean, Giant Probably Dongs. Yeah, but there you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's why he wanted the damn sword. Maybe he's trying to circumcise a <laughs> motherfucker. I mean, you never know. Oh, man. I mean, imagine okay. if the film went in. That, 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 and that, my friend, is what you call blood sport. The we're rising of the down. circumcision. We're getting, we're getting shut down. Um, so what did you think, like... Getting back into like current times and everything, um, we get this tournament going on. We get to our first couple of fight scenes. Uh, I don't know if you want to break down the fight scenes or just go right into kind of what really pushes the plot forward. And that is when Ray Jackson, someone that Duke's befriends, gets his ass fucking kicked, bro. And it's his own fault. I'm sitting here watching him. He 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 
got dude down, and then he starts fucking celebrating. Why did you stop? Keep beating the motherfucker's ass. Well, hold on, hold on. First of all, how the fuck did this guy even get in this tournament? I mean, he doesn't even white have a privilege. fighting style. Oh, ex- that's what he's, <laughs> exactly. It's white privilege. Um, oh, jeez, man, he was freaking bad. But I love his character, and like, yeah. the only thing I remember him in like before this was. He was the bully. I don't remember what his name was, but he was the bully in the Revenge of the Nerds, of the Nerds um, franchise. Yeah. And, um, you know, he later became, as we all know, later became Braun Strowman. So, um, you know, that was... <laughs> that was... Um, no, no, I liked his character. And I think it was a good dynamic because when you first saw Ray Jackson, I thought, like, when I first saw this movie, I thought he was going to be the bad guy of the movie because he's bothering the, the little Chinese girl and he's kind of rude and loud and he's drinking a beer. And you know they became friends, so I, you know, I, I, I like the dynamic. It, you seen Van Damme's like tough fighting side, but then you also see like his little bromance with him as well. And then later on, you see his little homance with Janice, the reporter. Janice, let's talk about Janice, man. What do you do? You, or do you or do you think she's still attractive nowadays, or is she only eighties attractive? No, man. I think I think I had looked up a picture with her because I was just trying to see what else she was in. Mm-hmm. And um, she hasn't done anything since like '98, but even in '98, the pictures I saw, she was, you know, she was still a good-looking chick. I don't know what she looks like now. She probably got like freaking dentures by now. I don't know. But can we talk about the savagery for a second of John Claude Van Damme? Because this man was like, "Listen, I'll." She's like, "Listen, I just I'm trying to get information on the Kumite. No one can give me any information. First of all, Kumite is supposed to be this." secret private thing but the whole freaking country knows about it mm-hmm. there's no one that does not know about it anyhow she's trying to break a story so he's like all right i'll tell you i'll tell you go on go on dinner with me go on, go on a date with me they go to dinner the man get him them draws and he still doesn't give her the damn freaking um story so okay. she had to sleep with him to get the story and she still didn't get anything how savage is that from van damme I mean, hey, this is why you gotta you gotta secure the deal. Like she gave up the goods. Like at that point, what is he supposed to do? He got what he wanted. You think you're gonna get any information? You're supposed to get the information. You went to dinner with him, then get the information, then give up the draws. Like you, she's just dumb, bro. She didn't play her cards right. Tim mocking that cooch. And Kumete in that booty. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, let me tell you, I'm so glad we're doing it because. Well, these retro episodes are going to be some fun because let's be real. Everyone who's listening to this, I know for a fact you haven't seen this movie once. You see this movie a hundred times and you don't want to hear some stuffy ass review scene by scene. You know damn well if you're listening to this and you were talking this with one of your homeboys and one of your homegirls, you'd be having the same type of discussions. And that's why we do what yeah. we do. Exactly. Exactly. That's what we do. What we do. Um, so, <laughs> other than getting in that ass, uh, Chong Lee, Chong Lee, not Chung Lee, Chong right. Lee gets in some ass in this movie. He's actually played, and I didn't know this at the time. This is just me getting ready for this. Uh, the actor's name is Bolo Young, and yeah, he's Bolo actually Young. like a, a a world-renowned martial artist. Like this dude is legit. He I, is. I, I I did not know that at all because you know I mean. Honestly, all the 80s movies, the only martial artist I knew was fucking Bruce Lee. I knew he was legit. Like, now as an adult, you can appreciate stuff more. He was a bodybuilder and a martial artist, and he was, like, world-renowned for both of them. And, that, like, looking at him, you can see it now, but it's it's just crazy. He still, I think the last thing I said, he, won, he I saw that he actually won a competition in 2010 still. What? Just like, Shit. How old, how old is this dude? I mean, uh, 2010, that's nine years ago. He got he me in his bo- 50s. He was born in 46. 46, so in 96, he was 50. Yeah. In 06, he was 60. That means he was 64. 64 Holy years shit. old, still winning martial art tournaments. Just let that sit in. Damn, Chung Lee, yo, that's that crazy. That is a bad motherfucker, bro. Yeah, I don't know if could you, you ever just, seen... Could you imagine somebody trying to, like, mug him, thinking, oh, we're going to get this old grand- grandfather, and you got your ass beat. By old grandfather, that shit is crazy. I don't know if you saw Double Impact. He was the bad guy in Double Impact as well. Yeah, yeah. Bolo Young, man, the guy, freaking classic. Here's here's something else I want to bring up, and I don't know if you know this. And every time I seem to bring this up, nobody ever knows this, and I I get so much enjoyment that I can bring something new. But there was a a, a fighter. I think in the movie his name was Parodies, which no one knows his freaking name. However, you'll know him as the guy whose freaking shin bone popped out of his leg. You remember that guy? Mm-hmm. Do you know who that is? No, who's that? Yes! 
I love when people don't know. So you know the guy I'm talking about, though, right? Yeah. He was in Kickboxer. That was Tang Po from Kickboxer. Can you believe that? Really? Dead ass. His name is Michael Kissy. Also, um, he was in. Uh, oh man, he was in Lionheart. He was in Lionheart. Lionheart had the same concept where two guys were trying to track down Van Damme. He was one of the guys that was trying to track down Van Damme, but no one really remembers him from that. People obviously remember him as Tong Po. And um, the story goes that these guys actually grew up together as teenagers, and they both broke into the film. He's also a legit martial artist, and they broke into the uh, film industry together, and Van Damme has always been a big friend. That's how he's in a lot of Van Damme movies. But, yeah, that's Tong Po, even though it looks nothing like him. That ugly motherfucker. That is an ugly motherfucker, bro. By the Absolutely. way, Absolutely. he Goro. He looks just like Goro from Mortal Kombat without any makeup. Well, that's really funny you say that. I guess that could go into the next thing I want to talk about. Did you know that this movie is the inspiration of Mortal Kombat? That would make sense. It's the absolute inspiration. Uh, the guy that made the game said one hundred percent. As a matter of fact, Johnny Cage is Frank Dukes. And that's why a lot of a lot of his fighting style, if you think about it, matches what what you know Van Damme was doing in the movie. But yeah, um, he looks like Goro, I believe that. And I mean, I got I got a little bit of Mortal Kombat, and I also got a little bit of Street Fighter, like the um, yeah. the sumo wrestler. He, I mean, that guy is like E Honda all the way. Yeah, he has the, down to the laugh and everything. Yeah, it's it's just funny to see how like what influenced other things like fighting stuff and. And things like that. But yeah, that's an ugly motherfucker. That is an ugly motherfucker. Um, g- keep going. What else you got, bro? What, what really the, go ahead. Let's talk about the fighters real quick. Were were there any fighters that like obviously it's a movie, but was there anyone that like looked impressive, like, hey, this dude looked like in real life, he'll fuck somebody up? Um, I mean, nothing comes to mind, but that's only because like I'm watching these just I'm just engulfed in like the actual fights themselves. I'm not trying to break it down like, oh, this motherfucker looks legit. Uh, so no, nothing stood out to me. How about how about the the, mon- the little monkey dude, the guy that was like jumping around, like you know, you remember Mon- the yeah, guy? Yeah. I don't even know what the fuck his name is. He what seems about? like he, he seems like he could be legit world champ. <laughs> he- heavyweight division. A heavyweight division world champ. Uh, oh, fuck super it. heavyweight division, maybe. Yeah. But actually, the guy, uh, if you remember who uh, Van Dam fought in the semifinals, he was like the. The kickboxer guy, kind of Muay Thai guy in the mm-hmm. beard, with the beard. I forgot what his name was, but he was actually super legit. Like one world championship in Muay Thai, and um, he owned his own Muay Thai. Uh, uh, in Th- I believe it was in Thailand. I'm not sure where his Muay Thai um, gym was, but he owned one. And as a matter of fact, in Kickboxer, when um, Van Dam is going around looking for Tang Po, and he walks into this random gym, and he's like, "I'm looking for Tang Po," and they start laughing at him. That that gym is that's the gym that's owned by the dude in uh in Bloodsport. So huh. yeah, he was, he was legit. Oh, cool. Cool. What yeah, man. I, what about the what about the 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 dialogue? I mean, Bro, so that's he, the that's the cheesiest part of these 80s. Act. Like yeah, I'm looking at like I we t- already talked about like uh Van Damme and how you can tell he's thinking about his lines before they say him, but the dialogue is done like like seriously it's like this. You're going to go over here and fight da, 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 this and then a pause. But uh, what do you mean? But it, it's just it's it, I don't know. It's just a real choppy ass like dialogue delivery. It's just fucking weird throughout this whole movie. And everyone's kind of like, have you, did you notice that really no one? I swear they're looking at cue cards. No one's really looking at the person in front of them at no. all throughout any part of this movie. No, you could tell like everybody's pretty green. Um, They're like, you know, kind of. I don't know what they were doing, man. I mean, I know they were drinking sake or some shit on the set. I don't know what they were doing, but have a little bit too much fun. Yeah, but as choppy and as everything you say, I still think that's what made the movie a little bit. Oh, um, yeah. That innocence, if you want to call it that. But I, I don't know. I enjoyed all the quirkiness and the line. Some of the lines you got all this movie. I mean, these are freaking classic lines like uh, "very good, but bit brick not hit br- back." That was good. Um, what about freaking what about Van Damme's leg splits? How many leg splits have you done like that in your life? None, bro. None. My balls would just run away from my body. Uh, how the fuck does he do that? Honestly. How does he do that without splitting his nutsack straight open? Do are we do we know that Van Damme has a nutsack? So what are you trying to say? He's transgender now? No, no, no. I didn't say he didn't Van, have a nutsack. John I'm Jean just, Claude Van Damita? That, Maybe for for his gimmick, he had his ball surgically removed, so he was so he was able to do it. 
you're going to wake up tomorrow and you're going to go outside and he's going to show up and, <laughs> well, and he's going to be like, nuts that, bitch. Well, to, to our knowledge, does Van Damme have any kids? I didn't say his kids. I said him. I'm, no, I'm saying, does he have any kids? Because he wouldn't be able to reproduce if he had his nuts removed. I'm sure he has kids. I'm sure they all have kids out there. I mean, Bro, who knows? Just uh, Wait. No, we know all the 80s. They probably have tons that haven't even... People don't even know that John claude Van Damme is their dad or out there. I know. They're going around, walking around with friggin'. They're born in America, but they have friggin' uh, Brussels accents. <laughs> Bro, that's not how accents work. You don't, you don't, it's Pat. Not, they're not... That's not how... Not hereditary? Works. No, that's not how it works, my, my brother. Damn, bro. Okay, that explains a lot. <laughs> What did you think about like one of the things that we definitely have to talk about is the ending fight of nothing else like like what did you think about it like looking back at it now 2019 all the way back to two, of 1988 what did you think about the final fight in this movie okay so the match was clearly weird but let me tell you what I actually on a serious note liked about it I love that something he learned originally from his shidoshi is what helped him win the fight because remember the, um, Chang Lee threw the salt or whatever the hell that was, bath bath salt or freaking a ball of cocaine or whatever the hell that was, in his eyes, temporarily blinding him. Cocaine. He, what was it? Cocaina. That's what that was. <laughs> oh shit! Tony Montana was in this. <laughs> Damn, bro, that dude, that dude, that dude, freaking, he was shipping far out. <laughs> no, you know who the coke dealer? You know who the coke dealer probably was? It was that dude that was placing the bets, like. If I was in this movie, I wouldn't have been one of the fighters because I'm a, I'm a lover, not a fighter. I would have been that dude that's setting up all the bets. That would have been me. Mm. You know the one guy, the one guy that was like that Janice was with undercover. He was kind of shady, trying to pay off the referee and shit. Yeah, that that dude is probably that's the cocaine dealer right there. But yeah, when he threw when uh, Chang Lee threw the salt in Van Am's eyes and he got blind, I love that he remembered when he was getting taught of like how to to fight without. Vision, yeah, and it was kind of a callback, so I enjoyed that. I love the ending, I love the fact that they made you know, they made uh, well, it, it wasn't really tapped out, but they said Mate, which is basically uncle. Um, love that, yeah, I, I think it was good. It's a, it's 80s action sequence, you're not gonna get freaking end game type shit here, so yeah, I know, I know, it, it was. It, it, it was good. I mean, the thing is, like you said, it's an 80s fighting sequence. If you go in and you're expecting, like, even like. And then in like fights at the level of the newest Creed movie, you're not gonna get that shit here. It's just not it's not happening. Like I people punch each other for real now in movies. They weren't doing that shit. Especially not for this whole movie was made for under two million dollars. So you know the actors didn't get paid shit. You're you not know punching trying to get punched. Pay me shit. Yeah, yeah you're not you know, punch me for that shit. Ain't no one trying to get punched for like five thousand dollars. Fuck that. <laughs> they got paid in five thousand dollars co- cocaine, and then they were probably having like massive orgies behind the scenes. So they got know. paid with cocaine and Chinese prostitutes <laughs> and sake, <laughs> sake and sucky. <laughs> what were you talking about, Victor? I think that was his name, Victor Lin, the short dude. He was like their liaison. The li- the, li- the li- bro. He just, he, he, I wanted to punch him every time he came on scene. What? He just had a punchable face. It's like Bello. His face just looked really punchable. You said like Bello? Yeah, like Bello. He just had a punchable face. Shout out to Andrew Bello. <laughs> the Andrew Bello. Uh, no, but, bro, I, like, I don't know if you know this. In March, I'm going to China and Japan, and I would love for that dude to be some like. Chinese prostitutes? Yeah, with my wife. <laughs> hey, I mean, a couple of that, a couple of prostitutes them. together. You know, hey, do what you do. Go ahead. Absolutely. I would love though for that to meet that dude because <laughs> that Chinese dude, prostitute is that what you Yo, mean? that I guarantee you, that dude would have him lined up. He just looks like that kind of person. <laughs> as much drugs as you want, liquor, women. He looks like he's on it, on it. I mean, that's that's that that's the take I got. Victor Lin, I think his name was. Yeah, I mean, I can agree with that. What else? What else stood up said about this? I mean, just still, Forrest. I'm, I can't get over Forrest Whitaker still having an intact eye. Like, what the fuck? I always thought his eye was always like that. Now I have more. What the fuck happened to Forrest Whitaker's eye, bro? Like, I need the story. You didn't know? No, what happened? Dead ass. Dead? No, dead serious. I don't know what's wrong with Forrest Whitaker's oh, eye. Oh, wow, bro. No, bro. I can't believe that shit. No. So when he was, I think. 13, 13 or 14. 
Yeah, when he was 13 or 14, he got into a uh, he went to a grocery store actually. And he was literally shopping for like regular shit, milk, bread, whatever. And he was in a grocery store. This is I think in California or something. I don't remember. I don't remember where. But he went to actually reach for a bread and there was this old lady like 80 years old. The lady hit cuz went to go for the same bread and he like snatched it and the lady took her umbrella and hit him in the eye and literally knocked his eye out of his socket. And then she started Oh kick- shit. She started kicking him. This is like an 80 something year old lady started kicking him in the nuts. What the- <laughs> oh shit. Are you serious, bro? Fucked him up in the grocery <laughs> store. And then you know what she did? Yo, they tried to kill him cuz it turned out that she was like she was like the grandmother of some like Bloods guy or some shit. Like the freaking Bloods walked up into this grocery store. They started flashing all kind of gang signs, pulling out guns and shit. And he ran the fuck away. But the thing is, he left his eye in the freaking lane. But one of the freaking um, I don't believe this story. You're talking shit, bro. Like... <laughs> <laughs> the fact that your ass can make that whole fucking story up on the fly like that is fucking hilarious. But I gotta give you props for that shit. But I'm like, as soon as you say he left his eye in there, I'm like, this motherfucker is making this shit up, bro. You had me, you had me until that one. You had me, you dickhead. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck happened to his eye, bro. Oh. I don't know. He was watching Dwayne watching Dwayne Hadley on YouTube. I don't know. <laughs> Oh man! Okay. Oh, that if if for for those who know who Dwayne Hadley is, that shit was just the funniest thing you guys have heard all week. That shit is funny. Oh damn! Uh, I don't even know what the fuck we were talking about anymore, bro. I got you. Got anything left on this movie, man? Where where we going next? Because that, um, I mean, we pretty much went through the entire movie. On a serious note, we I think we went through like every aspect of the movie. We went through. I mean, there's not much. Again, you've seen this movie thousands of times. I enjoyed rewatching it, even in 2019. It's still a classic to me. I still enjoyed every minute of it. Um, nothing I would change about it. It really sucks that they made like three other parts and we didn't get Van Damme. We I don't even know the name of the fucking guy that was in the in the other parts. But I try. I attempted to watch Bloodsport two, and it was so bad. The guy was so bad that I never gave the rest of the movie a chance, nor the other two. So. You know, I it sucks that we never got Van Damme, but I mean, he was on to bigger and better things. I think he did Kickboxer after this, and he did a bunch of other stuff. And you know, this was basically to me though, this was the birth of what we know as John Claude Van Damme, and what? I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I mean, I guess that's kind of where we can where we can end this at is like with John Claude Van Damme, and you, you know, we talked about eighties action stars and eighties and early nineties. Like everyone, I feel like has their eighties action star. Is Van Damme yours? Because mine, and I, I, I'll, I'll leave this off first, is like Patrick Swayze to me. And it's, he's not a martial artist. Patrick Swayze to me has always been my guy. I don't know if it's because like me and my dad used to watch Swayze movies and maybe I have an attachment that what that that place. But it's always to me, it's always Swayze is the, my, my person I go to. He's not not nearly the best actor out of it. Doesn't have the best movies out of that bunch. But that's my 80s action star to me. Who's yours? So... <clears throat> I'm going to answer the question, but first I want to ask, when you say my 80s action guy, are you talking about for one particular role or his overall work? Overall work. Like if you're going to randomly, let's just say like, yeah, like the first one you go to, you like the 80s action star that you'll just go, go to first, not, not a specific movie, but just like his acting, the, his roles, whatever. I have to, I have to go with, I mean, as much as I love Jacques Claude Van Damme, I have to go with, with Sylvester Stallone and mainly because of all the Rocky movies. And literally, okay. I just thought to myself, like, if Rocky, whatever was on, Rocky 1 through 5, I don't give mm-hmm. a shit about Rocky Balboa and everything after that. Rocky 1 through 5 was on. Would I rather watch, because you said it, would I rather watch that or would I flip the channel? I would flip the channel if it's Bloodsport. But if it's Kickboxer, which I love, Double Impact, which I love, Sudden Death, which I love, Hard Target, which I love. If it's any other movie outside of Bloodsport, I'm I'm not changing the channel. Okay. That's and even outside of Rocky, I mean, Sylvester Stallone still had Rambo. He had um, Over the Top. I don't know if you ever seen that one. That's kind of a cult classic. Mm-hmm. He had um, Cobra. He had a lot of good movies. That, and you know that that 
Uh, yeah, I got to go with Sylvester Stallone, but Van, uh, Van Damme, close number two. Yeah, and, you know, I, Swayze's my dude. Uh, and I think close number two to that, like I, like I said, so Stallone is the best actor out the bunch. Like, pure acting, he's the best. But uh, Kurt Russell, too. Like, I, have a, I, I don't know. There's a, a, a spot that I have for Kurt Russell's. Well, I know that sounds really, really gay. But you know what? Which I, it doesn't matter. spot? Um, it's, I have this one, like, it's kind of like Andrew in my Reaches. lower back. Yeah, you know, like. <laughs> what do you do with that spot? <laughs> but no, do you mock it? Akume take it. This, this, <laughs> this podcast has totally fallen off the rails, but I don't give it any shits. Yeah, this shit is gone fucking all, all left. But that's what happens, you know? And this is why this is a mini so. This is why this isn't part of the main podcast. Uh, because with, with our mini sods and what we're going to try to do, like, with me and JB have already talked about it. With the mini sods, We'll, we'll, we, we will catch up on movies that we didn't get to do full reviews on newer movies. But when we have these themes and something just old school, just be prepared for us to just have fun and talk shit, man. There's a chance for us to just sit back, put our beards down, and just have fun with it. You know, that's, First that's of all, really what, what you have is not really a beard. I shaved it. I shaved Bro, it. How long have uh, you been growing your beard now? Like five years? Uh, I've like been beard. I've, I've been. What do you, I, I trim it all the time. Like, if oh, I didn't you? trim it, I'd be fucking Jesus level at this point. <laughs> But no, like I've been bearded for four years now, bro. It's crazy. Nice. Yeah, I I completely shaved my shit off like uh, a while ago, and I just you know it's whatever. I'll yeah, probably go back. Do, to you. Exactly. Yeah. But let's get into ratings on this one. Yeah, let's do it. <sighs> okay, so I, I'll say this now because I like th- I, this may be. Why are you? Why are you taking off your pants? Why are you why are you stroking yourself to a Van Damme poster? Bro, stop it. Stop it. Dude. Yo, that's enough, bro. We're in the middle of a show. Bro, what are you Oh. Uh, bro, stop. Why I don't understand. Why are you stroking your dick to a Van Damme poster? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um so ratings for this one, uh, going back, um, I just because I'm rating this according to a scale, right? Not compared to everything. Like, I know because the rate I'm going to give these people going to be like, but, you know, if I give something newer, a different rating, they're going to be like, really, you rated Bloodsport above that? But this is a solid eight for me. It's just a fun movie. It's a, let, let's give this a retro scale. Yeah, the retro on the retro scale is a solid eight for me. Yeah, I have to. Yeah, I mean, if I'm going out of five or, or yeah, out of ten. A hundred. Well, you know what? I'm actually gonna give this one a maybe an eight and a half out of ten, maybe even a nine uh-huh. out of ten. I mean, this is one of my favorite favorite '80s action movies, and hands down, my favorite John Claude Van Damme. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and give this one a strong eight and a half out of ten. I absolutely enjoyed it. Well, damn, there you have it, man. Solid one for, from us. Um, if you haven't listen, if you're listening to this review, you made it this far. You've probably seen the movie. If by chance we've kept you entertained enough on a movie you've never seen, go watch this shit. Go watch the goddamn movie. Here's a spoiler. Van Damme wins everything. Yeah, everything. Every time. Um, yeah. I mean, except except having nuts because he's able to do the split. But uh, any <laughs> any parting words before we plug our social medias, JB? No, that's it, man. Why don't you tell, before we go into the close, why don't you tell the people, the fine people listening out there, what we got coming up for the rest of the year. So if you're listening to this on the day it drops... This coming up Monday, we will have our review of Queen and Slim, which people have been asking about like fucking crazy. So I'm really happy to give this guys to you. Uh, we'll give this review to you guys. Uh, after that, we have a our next mini sode will be on the wrestler. The top. The, the top oh no, the, the top movies of the decade will be our next mini review. Um, and this is another one that we're excited to bring you guys towards the end of the year, just to recap and you know what our movies, our best movies of the decade were, um, as well as I'll be giving my uh, JB, I know we haven't talked about this, but our worst movie of the decade, too. Just one. We just got to pick one. I have mine. It's really fucking easy. Uh, but, and yeah, I mean, that's what we got coming up on the next few episodes. It's going to be a fun time. If you guys want to get in your list of the best movies of the decade, send that to us at thefilmbrospod at gmo.com. We'll really look forward to it. You can also join us in the uh, Facebook discussion group. Probably post that in there, too, just getting what everybody's thoughts on are the best movies of the decade, worst movie of the decade, um, and things like that. You know what? Fuck it. I ain't even going to wait. Best movie of the decade, hands down, 
And I don't give a shit what anyone says. Hands down, Frozen 2. And you can follow me at CEO Hayes at CEO H A I C E on every social media platform. And I was just bullshitting, but I can also be found on Twitter at the P1JB. That's at T H E P1JB. And also on Facebook, Javid Bashrul. And if you want to follow us collectively, you can look for us at the Film Bros. Uh, the at the film bro yeah the at the film bros pod is where you can find us i'm sorry i apologize for that one um but definitely join that facebook group we haven't had any new members join in the last week or so uh we were steady growing yeah, actually, there I think, I think we did oh we did okay well there you go see i've just i've kind of been we, got, we got new people rolling up every single day gotta gotta get that new pussy but uh Where? this this has been another episode of the film frequency we see you lovely and beautiful people next week or just in a couple of days peace Hajime. <laughs> my body's ready, my heart's on fire.